2020 has been a record year despite the pandemic. We are so thankful for our wonderful families, friends, and Campaign HQ clients. Let's take a look back at this year's highlights. I can hardly believe that 10 years have passed since I joined the Campaign HQ family. So many things have changed, but as I reflect, many have not. When I joined the team, we were in a small building on the east side of Brooklyn, organizing house parties for local Iowa candidates. Days were spent designing invitations, taking RSVPs, tracking down donations, and driving to events, driving to a lot of events. Today, my days are spent setting up patch-through calls for organizations from across the country. When not setting up patch-through calls, I'm quoting voter ID, advocacy, or GOTV calls and text messages for federal, state, and local candidates. But as I said, many things have not changed. I still have the privilege of working with a team of fantastically devoted people. My coworkers are talented, engaging, spirited, and wholly committed to making Campaign HQ the best conservative call center in America. I still am honored to work with great clients. I love developing relationships with those who come to Campaign HQ for their phone calls and text messages. I consider many of our clients more than just clients, but friends and allies in the fight against the left. Some of you have even received emails with a few of my pictures attached, a hobby I have picked up since starting my adventure at CHQ. Another thing that has not changed is the expectation of excellence, both in our finished product and our service to you. I don't think I'll be working here for another 10 years, but I am excited to see what the next year will bring. I'm eager to see what our next great telephone offering will be. I'm eager to meet more clients and to make new friends and allies. Last year we planned on spending more of our time with our clients face to face, which we kicked off with our trip to the Reed Awards. Unfortunately, that is also where that plan ended as 2020 had other plans for us. Uh, but here in true CHQ fashion, we adjusted and focused on our Zoom meetings like the rest of the nation, which led us to partnering with our clients in new and different ways. Along with pivoting and communicating with clients and voters in different ways, Campaign HQ welcomed baby Ellie to the family in February of 2020. The month of March was full of uncertainty. Many were wondering, how will you get your name on the ballot if you can't door knock for petitions? How can you express your views on the economy to your voters? Will the election be held on schedule or postponed? Voters were just as full of questions. Where do I vote? How do I vote? Who is even on the ballot? With door knocking and events out of the question, it was time to reopen and jumpstart the campaign, starting those critical conversations with voters in new ways. The election was not canceled. 2020 was quite a year. It was the year of COVID-19 mask mandates and lockdowns. It was the year of riots, wildfires, and our own Iowa derecho. It was also a year of some of the most unique election results in U.S. history. We all know that COVID affected everyone in the country. Some businesses were shuttered while others were allowed to stay open. The effect it had on Campaign HQ was one that was explainable, but not one we had anticipated. 2020 was the Campaign HQ year of the Telephone Town Hall. When elected officials or those seeking office couldn't meet in person, what was their next best option? telephone town halls. We have always done telephone town halls, but not in the numbers done in 2020. The pandemic allowed us to meet new people, state legislators from across the country. The pandemic helped us hone our telephone town hall skills. One might think that setting up a telephone town hall is simple, but a lot goes into the process like selecting the correct list, advising the client on talking points, making sure people are appropriately trained to screen calls, and attentive administration of a live event. I have no desire to see another pandemic, but I do hope our clients continue to use telephone town halls. When you have the option to speak to hundreds, if not thousands, or speak with a couple dozen folks at a rec center town hall, what sounds best to you? Sam Stern, data management engineer. What was your favorite thing about the election this year? All the wins we had, we had uh, for the company, we worked with a lot of clients that had big wins. Her memory of the election, was like a couple of days leading up to the election when it was like nuts um, and we had like a billion projects coming in and just the excitement of it all. Uh, Austin Sirwinski, data intern. <laughs> what do you do at Camp uh, HQ? I'm Preplus. I do some IT work. I help out with our texting platform. How has your schooling helped you at Camp HQ? So I go to school at William Penn. My degree is in software engineering and information tech. So, software engineering helps out when I do all this preps and stuff, and then the information tech obviously helps when I do any of the IT work around here, or when things break and I have to go fix them because I'm 
everybody. Jessica Wilcox, Administrative Assistant. Why were peer-to-peer -peer texts beneficial this election cycle? We noticed um, that there was a lot of responses because people were at home and because of COVID and were able to talk more with us. Hello, this is Randy Hargrove. I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to those who have voted early in the runoff election. If you haven't voted yet, you can still vote Tuesday, July the 14th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at your voting location. Many uncertainties ahead for our county, and we need a sheriff who has the integrity, experience, training, and maturity to lead the men and women of the sheriff's office in meeting those needs. I am that man. Please vote Randy Hargrove for Houston County Sheriff. Schilling, I'm a campaign assistant. This campaign cycle, I learned a lot about myself and really affirmed myself in my own conservative beliefs working with Campaign HQ. <laughs> my favorite campaign moment was election day, sending out all those text messages and recording like a million <laughs> um, different voicemails for different organizations. Overall, that day was just a good day. Nicole Schlinger, president of Campaign HQ. Well, in September, we had a huge surge in advocacy projects. We were getting out and persuading people to vote for candidates all across the country. Live calls, automated calls, telephone town halls, and text messages. This is Ken Tracy, Senior Campaign Director at CHQ. In October, we spent at least three to four days either prepping or executing our telephone town hall. 2020 really did bring many challenges, but also brought many opportunities. And I'm just glad that I was on a team that was focused on a path forward versus just sitting still. In November, we celebrated victories up and down the ballot, to name a few. Senator Lindsey Graham, Senator John Cornyn, Steve Daines, Governor Greg Abbott's wins up and down the ballot in Texas, Oregon, Right to Life, so many more. We're just honored and thankful that our clients trusted us to deliver their message. Hi, my name is Nicole Motier, and I'm a data management specialist at Campaign Headquarters. I spent my Thanksgiving with my immediate family. Uh, we had a nice Thanksgiving lunch, dinner, and then we did some online shopping. Hi, I'm Nikki, and I am the office manager here at Campaign HQ. I am most thankful for my family. It's been a crazy year, so I am especially thankful for my job here at Campaign HQ, uh, the roof over my head, and good health. I feel truly blessed. We are Campaign HQ. We are Campaign we are Campaign HQ. We are Campaign HQ.